everybody, welcome back to Fanblade. Uh, it is good to be back, and it is good to have a Rickenbacker on my bench once again. Thank you very much to everybody who watched the previous one and commented on it and uh, subscribed and did all of that stuff. Um, uh, I didn't have high hopes for that video initially just because it was so long, I didn't think anybody would want to watch it, and nobody did for about three weeks, it just sort of sat there. Uh, but then in the last few days, last three, four days, uh, the views have just skyrocketed and uh, the comments sections taken off and there's great conversations happening um, and uh, so thank you everybody for participating in that I appear to have pleased the great algorithm and in the spirit of milking it for all it's worth we're going again now in the last video I had a good old whinge about the pickup covers now uh, obviously I've removed it this is a good thing but what's not good is that we've got all this blank space which just needs to be filled in with something because as I'm playing the bass I really really like, I find my thumb just resting mainly around here but sometimes it's drifting over here and I'm pressing right on the windings of that pickup and I just, we can't have that, that's just not a good situation. So, uh, you get a bezel and you stick a bezel in there and that just uh, attaches underneath there to two screws that are cut out for the pickup and that just solves that problem. Now, um, I had uh, mentioned that I was thinking of making one out of brass uh, and, or stainless steel. Um, the fact is I don't really want to use metal because it's going to be heavy and as one commenter pointed out, uh, I've made notes over here, where are we? Uh, Bulobilu, uh, I think that's how you pronounce that, um, he said don't use brass, it'll oxidize, use one millimeter stainless. I absolutely agree. Um, uh, the piece of brass that I have is oxidized <laughs> it's not looking that great so I'm not going to use that I don't have any one millimeter stainless I do have some three millimeter stainless but again that's adding weight that's that's kind of hard to work as well because it's you know it's just difficult material to, to cut um, uh, but commenter black dog sheep said what about 3d printing a bridge pickup spacer for the real rig oh perfect plastic 3d printing would be excellent, I don't have a 3D printer, but I do have an enormous amount of acrylic on hand. Therefore, acrylic. The process is actually very, very simple for making this. Um, essentially, all you have to do is take the strings off, take the pickup apart, measure it up and mark it out, cut it to size, mark out two holes and drill them, mark out the pickup hole and cut it, sand it off smooth, polish it up, peel off the protective layer, put it all back together, and there it is. It's a pretty good result. Uh, I rounded off the edges just a little bit to uh, sort of give it a nice rounded appearance, but the thing is you can't really see it. <laughs> I did actually think of uh, covering the underside of it with foil tape, uh, just to give it a kind of a chrome look. Uh, I don't think it needs it, I think it, it looks fine. What I am going to do with the aluminium foil tape, however, is I'm going to shield these cavities because these are not shielded. Under there and all under here, none of this is shielded. Uh, and this base has, in certain circumstances, had a pretty mean buzz on it. Um, there's one uh, particular bar that we play at where I don't know if they've got some problem in their grounding system or if I'm standing right next to a massive power transformer or something, but it's, um, yeah, <laughs> buzz central. You don't tend to get that with a jazz base. With a jazz base, each pickup, is a single coil and they will buzz individually but when you add them together one of them is reverse wound and they will cancel out the hum. Rickenbacker don't do that. And I do not understand why. <laughs> it's another gripe that people have quite rightly with Rickenbacker is that it would be such a simple thing to do but they just stick to tradition which is, as far as I'm concerned is the refuge of those with no imagination. But that aside, these pickups are identical, they are buzzing, I'm going to have to shield these cavities.
like to dispel a little myth, if I may. Uh, the myth is that when you're shielding something, you need to fold over the uh, the, the edges of something so that uh, it will stick down and make proper contact with the thing. The fact is, there's so much surface area, it'll it's it's making enough of a contact. It is forming that Faraday cage through the adhesive. Even um, here is a little continuity tester that makes this noise, and here is uh, the continuity between these two pieces of. Uh, uh, tape that were not folded over at each end. There you go. Right, that's all shielded, that's all good, it's not grounded out anywhere, it's not shorting out, I have checked it, it is fine, it is great in fact. The last thing I want to cover in this video is the stereo wiring and how to get the best out of it. Um, uh, first of all, let's just uh, establish one clear thing. These bases are not stereo. Let's examine the word stereo. Um, you have two ears, one on either side of your head well we hope when you hear a noise you are picking it up from two different points and you are uh, hearing the spatial difference on either side of your head this is great if you're recording a drum kit drum kits are larger than your head you have to record them in stereo they are a true stereo acoustic instrument a piano is larger than your head it is a true stereo acoustic instrument um, acoustic guitars not necessarily larger than your head, but they sound better when you are recording them and you capture that stereo image in uh, from two different sound sources. Now, with an electric bass, you really don't have that. You really don't have a stereo image that you're creating, especially not in the low frequencies that uh, this thing's capable of. Uh, it's like there's just no point. Basses are basically mono. These are called stereo because it's going to what is commonly called a stereo jack. It's the technical term for it, but it's not putting out a stereo signal. It is putting out two channels, one pickup per channel. It's a multi-channel bass. So here are the outputs. Uh, this is a standard mono socket, this is a standard stereo socket, and this is a standard stereo jack. Um, again, it's not putting out a stereo signal, it's putting out two mono signals. So that goes in there, and then the other end goes to this. Now this is a splitter box. Uh, they're very, very simple to make. Uh, it's literally a stereo jack and it's splitting off to two mono sockets. There's nothing to making these, you whip one up in about five minutes. Um, I made this one out of an old Line 6 power supply because, <laughs> surprise, surprise, it blew up. Um, but the box is still useful. So, uh, that's what I'm using. Now, once you've got to this point, you've got a few options. You can uh, take the bridge pickup and the neck pickup and you can send them to different places. You can send the neck pickup to a bass amp and the bridge pickup to a guitar amp and uh, you can do all that. Uh, for my purposes, bringing an extra amp along to gigs uh, I've, I've, I bring keyboard amps and I bring all sorts of stuff anyway, like I don't need to be bringing another amp. So what I have been doing, and this works rather well, is simply running both of these into a mixer. This has a pretty interesting effect and I'm going to demonstrate uh, by first of all running it in mono just through one channel. And then we'll plug into stereo and we'll talk about the differences of why what's actually going on here. And for anyone that's interested, this is the Boss BX40 4-channel mixer. It's designed for instruments to be run exactly like this. Uh, it's uh, quite good. I am uh, recording 
directly into the test cam DR05X. None of this is sponsored, by the way. I'm just telling you what I'm using. Uh, and then I am monitoring out through the little PV blazer that I have here, which I've so far not been able to kill. Okay, so we are plugging into the mono jack. And we are plugging into channel 4 on here. Turning the power on. Turning the volume up. Set it to instrument. And... We've got a fairly cheap and cheerful little, uh, little bass sound there. Everything's on full. Now... Now, there's a strange thing that happens with all this passive wiring here. When you have both pickups on full, there's uh, a tendency for some electrical weirdness. Uh, and I've heard lots of conflicting stories about what this is, whether it's uh, phasing between pickups, whether it's um, uh, impedance mismatching, uh, treble bleeding, bass loss through added resistance. I mean, there's a ton of different things that could be going on here. But the end result, and you get this on jazz basses, you get this on a lot of basses, uh, is that when you have a passive bass with two pickups, when you turn one pickup down, the whole thing gets louder. I don't actually know why it is, but uh, this is why I have decided that running the thing in stereo like this, effectively what it does is it gives you a separate preamp for each channel. So that instead of having all of this potential weirdness here, it's all happening with a, a powered uh, dual preamp thing in the mixer, uh, there's, there's none of, none of the, that sort of thing can occur. Um, so let's uh, have a little sound comparison again. I'm just I'm basically running the bridge pickup at full and the neck pickup at about seventy percent, and that's giving a certain tone. I will mimic that uh, on here, and you'll you'll hear the the difference that having a powered preamp on each uh, on each pickup can 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 really give you. <laughs> It's it's much fuller. It's much richer. This is this is you know a, 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 a fine fine way. And the thing is, you can adjust the volume to suit your taste. Here is just the neck pickup. Just the bridge pickup. And both of them together, without any of the, 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 the passive weirdness that goes on in here, just two channels blended. <laughs> and peaking. <laughs> Let's just turn those down a bit. Now, the obvious question here is, how would this whole system go with another type of bass in it? How would a jazz bass sound wired in stereo? Um, uh, I've got a, a Music Man copy that's got uh, two big pickups. How would that go in stereo? You know, that would be an amazing thing to find out. Now, I had a route around in the spares bin. I've only found one stereo socket and that is not the right type to go in a guitar i would never put that on an instrument so um, i will have to order some parts and hopefully next week we will be uh, pulling apart po probably the chicken hacker and a jazz bass and some other things um, and we're going to do a deep dive on stereo wiring and how to get the best out of it uh, and exactly you know if you've got any ideas in the comments as to what is going on with that whole volume dipping thing when both pickups are on full. I would love to hear your thoughts, so please get in the comments section and let us know. Uh, but apart from that, uh, we'll wrap it up. Um, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for subscribing, and I'll see you next week. Cheers.